Greetings and welcome to this massive open online course, Introduction to Bio-Risk Management. In this particular lecture, we will be learning about the management of clinical samples. Clinical samples or samples derived from hospital patients are analyzed routinely in hospitals and pathological laboratories. The objectives of this module are to introduce you to the different types of clinical samples, to understand the various processes involved in analyzing clinical samples, to assess the risk posed by the processing of clinical samples, to identify the pertinent controls for the mitigation of these risks, and to understand the implications for biosecurity management of clinical samples. The learning outcomes for this module are, upon completion of this module, you should be able to describe the various types of clinical samples, describe the processes involved in the diagnosis of microbial, serological, and nucleic acid samples, apply the pertinent controls to mitigate the risk posed by the processing of clinical samples, and describe the management of the security aspects of sample analysis. Clinical samples can be in the form of blood, serum, swabs, stool, urine, body fluids, and biopsies. Clinical samples may consist of multiple biological agents. In this case, the risk group is generally unknown. It is advisable to assume the highest risk group when managing clinical samples. We must refer to the sample collection sheet to obtain information about the case history of the patient and refer to specific material safety data sheets if the sample is transported in a chemical medium. Sample processing. There are four diagnostic procedures which can be associated with the processing of clinical isolates. These are microbial isolation and culture, serological tests such as enzyme-linked immunosorbent assays, nucleic acid, RNA and DNA extraction and polymerase chain reaction, and finally microscopy. Microscopy can be in the form of scanning electron microscopy to detect viruses as well as conventional optical microscopy for the detection of bacteria. The first risk which must be considered is the risk during transport. The sample is generally transported from the hospital or collection center via the transport network. You must ensure that the sample is packaged appropriately. The sample is clearly labeled. Absorbent material is included in the sample packaging. Adequate cooling agents such as dry ice or ice packs are shipped 
together with the sample in order to ensure sample integrity. Personnel such as drivers and couriers must be trained in sample transport and in mitigating the risk posed by sample spills during mishaps or accidents. This is a standard biohazard symbol. It will accompany most samples which are composed of biological agents. The second aspect of risk mitigation involves sample documentation. All samples must be documented upon receipt in both an electronic and handwritten format. Samples may be assigned specific codes in order to pr protect the identity of the patient. Documents must be stored in secure locations or secure servers. Inventory management is essential in the event that samples are archived. As you can see, risk mitigation covers both aspects of biosafety and biosecurity. In the event that the sample is cultured for microbial analysis, microbial samples derived from bacteria or viruses may be cultured in appropriate media. The risk assessment must be conducted for exanic cultures based on the specific risk group. Some samples may have specific risks associated with them, such as the ability to produce spores or to be dispersed via aerosols. The judicious use of controls is required to mitigate the risk posed by microbes. In the case of serological procedures such as ELISA or enzyme-linked immunosorbent assay, the serological procedures involve the use of centrifugation for recovery of serum. This must be done within a biosafety level 2 or biosafety level 3 laboratory or containment facility. Certain procedures such as samples derived from patients infected with risk group 4 pathogens may need to be done in a biosafety level 4 facility, which offers complete containment of the biological agent. Another aspect which must be considered in most laboratories is the disposal of waste. Biological samples generate a significant amount of clinical waste and all laboratory waste derived from the processing of clinical samples must be treated as hazardous. Waste should be labeled appropriately and cataloged. Waste must be autoclaved except for specific volatile or corrosive substances which may necessitate special decontamination procedures. Biological waste may also be incinerated after autoclaving. Generally, laboratories appoint a specialized company to dispose of biological waste after decontamination at the facility. Performance can be assessed at the facility by analysis of the incident and accident reports. Please report all incident and accidents using the pertinent documentation. Baseline monitoring of serum of the laboratory personnel can also give an indication of the breach of containment. Procedural audits based on observation of the personnel by the Biosoft Safety Officer or an independent auditor as a bench audit can also identify potential areas for improvement. Reporting of incidents. All incidents must be reported to the Biosafety Officer. Appropriate documentation of the incident should be done in a specific format. Identification of the root cause of the incident is an essential element of incident analysis and a revision of the standard operating procedure may be required to mitigate the risk posed by biological agents, especially in the case of incidents which recur on a frequent basis. Accidents are the escalation of incidents and accidents pose a serious threat to personnel as well as the operation of the laboratory facility. 
All accidents must be reported to the laboratory management. The management will be required to report the accident to the local authorities in order to facilitate investigations and identification of the causative factors and controls which are applied to mitigate the risk of accidents is an essential component of risk mitigation. Another aspect of biosafety management is biosecurity management. Data security is essential if clinical samples involve the management of patient data. All data must be kept confidential. Employees must be required to sign a non-disclosure agreement. Data must be secured electronically. All printed documents must be stored securely and treated as controlled documents. Copies of documents or data must not be made without prior authorization. Inventory management is another aspect of biosafety and biosecurity management. Patient samples may be stored for future detail analysis. The samples must be stored under appropriate conditions and physical security must be maintained. Inventory management is critical to proper biosafety management. Your organization may be required to comply with specific national and local regulations. Please refer to these laws and regulations when developing your biosafety manual. A general document for reference is the CWA 15793 SEN Workshop Agreement on Laboratory Biorisk Management. To summarize, this module was designed and developed to introduce you to the basic guidelines in the management of clinical samples. You will have to develop specific procedures for biorisk management based on your organizational procedures and compliance with local standards. I thank you for watching this instructional video. Stay biosafe. Thank you.